Hey everyone, Rika here. So I wanted to give you guys the update on my experience of the Amoro Namie live tours that I just got recently, my last J-pop haul. So I just thought I'd share with you guys what I thought. So I decided to go with watching her 2013 tour feel first. And the reason I did this instead of watching Jean at first was because I felt like since, I, I don't know, since it was 2013, I wanted to go in order and then save the 2015 and 2016 last. And also, just from when I'd watched previews of them briefly, I felt like the last, the most recent one she did, the, her Genic tour, that it would just be so much more epic. <laughs> and so I decided to go with watching the field tour first, and I thought it was really good. I definitely did. Um, but the Gen the Genic tour was definitely by far my most favorite one. And granted, I've only watched two now, but I mean the, the feel one was really good. But I like I feel like I like the songs from her Genic album so much more. And it was just uh, the effects and everything. It was so crazy. And I will definitely get around to doing a review on both of those separately. But I just wanted to share with you guys some thoughts. So I definitely give Amoto Namie props. I mean, she literally does dance through every single second of her concert for the most part, except for like, what, the one or two slow songs that she might sing. And the ability and skill that it takes to be able to dance while you're jumping and dancing and singing is incredible. And the fact that she's able to keep her voice so steady, I was extremely impressed by that. And it kind of blew me away, to be honest. And she does have some killer dance moves. I will admit though, after watching both tours, that I kind of feel like sometimes a lot of her dance moves start to look the same. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, because it does keep me entertained, but sometimes I find myself getting a little bored because I'm like, oh, well, this looks like the same dance she just did like two songs ago. And I still think my favorite is going to be my Kodokumi concert, just because I feel like with hers, I usually don't run into boredom with it. Okay, except for the ballad sections. Those are definitely hard for me to sit through at times. But other than that, I feel like because she keeps such a good crowd-pleasing atmosphere and she really draws you in. I mean, she's got like a story and she, I don't know, the way she interacts and smiles and the dances are very drastically different in my opinion. I mean, you've got X tape where they're over here going like this, like with a tape. And then you've got Hurricane with this other crazy dance, especially Taboo, Love Me Back, like all those songs, like they've got great and awesome dances to go with it and Loaded is different and everything. Whereas I feel like in Motonamie, so many of them are spin, spin, leg out, slow leg thing in. And <laughs> I don't know, I just felt like I was kind of repeating watching myself. Now, is that to say that I don't like her concerts at all? Absolutely not. I adore her concerts and I was really blown away by it. And I think she's an incredible live artist. The fact, like honestly, her voice sounds exactly identical to on her sound, like to on her actual CDs. And that's really impressive because as she's aged, I mean, I, I believe she's the oldest out of the three between Hamasaki Ayumi, uh, Kodakumi, and then herself. I believe she's 38 right now. I could be wrong, so I apologize about that. But I think she's 38. And I think Hamasaki Ayumi is 36 and then Kodokumi is 32 or 33, I believe. And so I, for the fact that she's grown so much older and she's been in this business for, I don't know, like 23 years, I think now, because I believe her, her 20th anniversary was in 2012. So whatever that puts her at. So she's been in it for a while and I don't really notice much of a voice change. I mean, obviously her earlier work, she has a much higher range. But for her to keep her voice so strong still, it sounds incredible. And so I think as an artist herself and with what age she's already at, her voice has really stayed in such strong and great condition. And that's really impressive. Whereas I definitely can tell with Kodokumi, like her voice has changed and I feel like she has lost some range, especially from her earlier days. Granted, she does have a deeper voice, I feel like. Amoto Namie is similar, because she does have a deeper voice than most J-pop artists, in my opinion. Like, Hamasaki Ayumi has a really high, unusual voice. And I feel like Hamasaki Ayumi has also lost some of her range, especially when I watched her um, countdown tour that what they had on YouTube for a while. I don't know if it's still on there, but they had like her whole countdown for this last previous year. And when she sang the warning song, it sounded like she was just kind of screaming and yelling and really off key and I was kind of like whoa 
and that yeah that was kind of my first time watching a full tour of hers as well and so it was kind of <laughs> I didn't really know what to think but I was just like oh my ears kind of but with Kotokumi she definitely can still pull off the range does she try to go high sometimes when she shouldn't absolutely she does but the fact that I, I do appreciate that, I mean, as she's growing older, she is understanding, well, she's not going to have the same range at all points of her life, especially when she strained her voice and over the years of how many performances she's done as well. I mean, it's going to change. It's going to be strange. She's not always going to be able to reach those notes, but she does alter her songs and try to keep it in a lower range during that time. And while some people are like, well, what? you know, I don't like that she's not hitting those notes. I think, you know, it's a smart move on their part because we if we want them to keep singing, they need to really protect their voices and not overwork them too much because for me personally, Kotokumi is by far my favorite J-pop artist and I, there's a lot of reasons why I like her. Um, just That's a whole other story that I'll get into later. But, um, you know, as in, when we love our artists, we want them to try to sing for as long as possible. And for both Emoto and Nanie and Kotokumi, I would love for them to keep going. And I'm really interested to see how long Emoto Namie will stay in the music scene because with her, if she's already 38, you know, I'm really curious to see if she's going to make it to like a 30 years because I think that would be so awesome because, you know, she still looks so young in her face. Like if I didn't know her at all and I just saw a picture, I'd be like, oh, like she's maybe like 20, late 20s or something like that. But she looks so great for her age. I mean, most of the J-pop artists do and Asians in general in that culture, I feel like they age very, very well. And <laughs> I do have to say that I definitely envy that. I wish us Americans would age a little bit more gracefully. Some do, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get lucky. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought it was a really incredible concert. I thought she did such a great job with it. And I'm really excited to give you guys a play-by-play -play of what I thought of each one of the separate performances. So I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to do a review on first. I'll keep you guys posted and some other separate news. I do have a second, yes, that's right, a second J-pop haul on its way that I've ordered. There are a few items that are um, out of stock, so they're waiting for the stock to come in, and I will definitely post that video. It is probably going to be about two weeks or so, two or three weeks before I actually get all the items that I want, and so I will keep you guys posted, and I will put a video up of my next haul. So the reason I'm kind of doing them in segments is, I mean, paychecks, payday, bills, I've got to make sure that everything is taken care of first before I can get just the fun things on the side. And also great news, my husband just got an awesome, great new job and I'm so excited for him. It's a really big step towards our future and I think it's going to have a lot of benefits for us as well. So I'm super excited and we had to get some clothes for him for his new job. So I'm really excited. So a really good week for us. So thank you guys so much for watching. And again, let me know what your guys' experiences were down in the comments below. If you've watched any live tours from a J-pop artist, what was the first one you watched? What were your impressions? If you've watched a Kodokumi, a Motonamie, or a Hamasaki Ayumi tour, let me know and what your thoughts were. And especially let me know on a Hamasaki Ayumi because I'm starting to consider I haven't been able to convince myself quite yet, but I do want to watch like a full real live DVD tour of hers. And if you've watched any of those, go ahead and put in the comments down below for me what you would recommend that I start out with first, because I want to get a good impression because I felt like the countdown when I watched kind of turns me off towards it just because of how her voice just sounded so strained and overworked. And I'd really like to give it a chance and really give her an opportunity so I can see what type of work she does when she's doing her lives. So if you've got a recommendation on that, please let me know. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.